Welcome to our YouTube vlog. In this episode, we delve into AC Bradley's lecture 6 on Shakespearean tragedy, focusing on the complex character of Iago in Othello. Join us as we analyze the depths of Iago's villainy, exploring his motivations and actions. Additionally, we'll examine the character sketches of Cassio and Emilia, shading light on their roles and significance in the play. Get ready for an in-depth exploration of these captivating characters and their contributions to one of Shakespeare's greatest tragedies. Subscribe for more insightful content on literature and drama analysis. Welcome to our YouTube vlog. In this episode, we delve into A.C. Bradley's lecture 6 on Shakespearean tragedy, focusing on the complex character of Iago in Othello. Join us as we analyze the depths of Iago's villainy, exploring his motivations and actions. Additionally, we'll examine the character sketches of Cassio and Emilia, shading light on their roles and significance in the play. Get ready for an in-depth exploration of these captivating characters and their contributions to one of Shakespeare's greatest tragedies. Subscribe for more insightful content on literature and drama analysis. Two main types of interpretations of Iago. Bradley reduces Iago to a common villain driven by motives such as revenge, jealousy, or ambition. These interpretations, according to him, fail to capture the complexity of Iago's character and reduce him to a simplistic figure. Bradley portrays Iago as a being who hates good and loves evil for their own sake, without any clear motive other than a desire for the pain of others. This interpretation sees Iago as a symbol of pure malice, closer to Shakespeare's conception of him. He argues that this interpretation makes Iago more of a symbolic figure than a realistic character, more suited to a poem like Goethe's Faust than to a human drama like Othello. Analyzing Iago's character Bradley acknowledges the contributions of Coleridge, Hajlet and Swinburne to the understanding of Iago's character but decides to offer his analysis instead of simply summarizing these critics' views. Bradley proposes to examine how other characters in the play perceive Iago and what conclusions can be drawn from their perceptions. This approach suggests a focus on the interactions between Iago and other characters and the impressions he leaves on them throughout the play. By exploring how Igo presents himself to others and how they interpret his actions and motives, the author aims to uncover insights into the nature of his character. Bradley suggests an evaluation of Igo's character based on the events and dialogues within the play itself. This indicates a close reading of the text to discern Igo's true motivations, intentions and psychological makeup. Thereby he seeks to provide a comprehensive understanding of his character. A.C. Bradley warns regarding the misconceptions of Iago's character in Othello. Bradley addresses the misconception that Iago's character embodies a particularly Italian form of villainy. He suggests that such an interpretation is overly simplistic and does not align with Shakespeare's broader approach to characterization. Bradley argues against the idea that Igo's character is specifically Italian, likening it to the notion that Othello represents a study of Moorish character. There is a belief that Italian villainy may have been prevalent in Shakespeare's time and could have influenced his portrayal of characters like Igo, but this influence is minimal. Bradley emphasizes Shakespeare's tendency to transcend superficial differences of nationality, race and period in his characters, focusing instead on their inward character and universal human traits. Bradley also disputes the notion that Iago exemplifies the popular Elizabethan idea of a follower of Machiavelli, noting that there is no indication in the play that Iago is an atheist or a disbeliever in the prevailing religion. He highlights Iago's use of religious language and contrasts him with a character like Aaron in Titus Andronicus, who is more aligned with the stereotype of a Machiavellian villain. Bradley further warns against taking Iago's statements at face value. He emphasizes the need to scrutinize his words and actions in the play to uncover the truth. 
He highlights a tendency among critics to mistakenly treat Igor's assertions as factual information provided by Shakespeare, leading to misinterpretations of the character's motives and actions. Example Bradley uses the example of Iago's assertions about the appointment of Cassio as Othello's lieutenant to illustrate this point. Iago tells Rodrigo that three prominent Ventians had recommended him for the position, but Othello refused out of pride and obstinacy, choosing Cassio instead. Iago further claims that Cassio lacks practical knowledge of war, unlike himself, who has fought alongside Othello. Bradley suggests that while it is certain that Othello did appoint Cassio as his lieutenant, much of what Igo says about the circumstances is dubious. There is no reason to believe that Othello refused the recommendation out of pride or that he lied about having already chosen his officer. The author argues that it is more likely that Othello chose Cassio for valid reasons, such as his expertise in military matters, rather than mere bookish knowledge as Iago claims. The author also points out that Desdemona's description of Cassio contradicts Iago's assertion that Cassio lacked experience in war. Desdemona describes Cassio as someone who had shared dangers with Othello and had built his fortunes on Othello's love, indicating that Cassio was indeed experienced in military matters. So, the readers or the critics have to approach Iago's statements with skepticism and consider the facts and evidence within the play before concluding his character. Bradley provides a detailed description of Iago's character as perceived by his friends and acquaintances. He emphasizes that Iago is not the typical melodramatic villain often portrayed on stage but rather a complex character with various facets to his personality. Iago, Venetian soldier, Shakespeare describes Iago as a Venetian soldier, around 28 years old, with a reputation for courage and a good deal of military experience. Despite his great powers, Iago is portrayed as vulgar and lacking in refinement, suggesting that he is not of gentle birth or breeding. He is depicted as blunt and outspoken, with a tendency to make caustic remarks about human nature. However, his honesty and blunt manner are seen as enduring qualities by those who know him. Honest Iago, one of the key aspects of Iago's character highlighted by the author is his honesty. The word honest is applied to Iago multiple times throughout the play, and he is described as a man who speaks his mind and is critical of abuses. Despite his cynical remarks, Iago is shown to be genuinely sympathetic and helpful to those in need, such as Cassio when he is disgraced. Iago's loyalty and warmth towards his friends are evident in his actions, such as when he comforts Cassio and helps him devise a plan to regain his post. Iago's impulsiveness, the author suggests that Iago's flaw, if he has one, is his impulsiveness and tendency to act too quickly in defense of his friends. He is portrayed as a man with a warm and loyal heart, willing to go to great lengths to help those he cares about, even if it means acting against his cynical nature. Iago and Emilia Bradley discusses the relationship between Iago and his wife, Emilia, shading light on their dynamic and how they are perceived by those around them. Emilia is portrayed as a woman who, despite knowing some of Igo's flaws, such as his tendency to be jealous and to speak sharply to her, still maintains a level of trust and affection for him. She knows he is not entirely honest, as he had asked her to steal Desdemona's handkerchief, but she views this behavior as odd rather than criminal. Emilia's lack of suspicion about Igo's true nature is evident in her reactions to various events in the play such as when she fails to suspect him of orchestrating the plot against Othello and Desdemona. Bradley highlights the irony that while Emilia, who is closest to Iago, fails to see his true nature, others, including Othello, are completely deceived by him. This contrast underscores the complexity of Iago's character and his ability to present a false facade to the world. The author also emphasizes Emilia's shock and disbelief when she finally realizes the extent of Iago's deceit, 
as seen in her desperate appeal for him to disprove the accusations against him. This moment serves as a dramatic revelation of Iago's true nature and its impact on those closest to him. Iago's outward appearance and inner self Bradley draws further conclusions from the contrast between Iago's outward appearance and his true nature, highlighting the remarkable aspects of Iago's character and the tragedy inherent in his story. Bradley emphasizes the prodigious nature of Iago's powers of dissimulation and self-control. Unlike characters such as Edmund or Richard, who may occasionally reveal their true selves through outbursts of emotion, Iago maintains his facade consistently over the years. This level of self-control may seem almost implausible, but the author suggests that Iago finds some relief in expressing caustic or cynical remarks, which are often misinterpreted as signs of honesty, thus reinforcing the trust others place in him. Bradley suggests that Igo's success in deceiving others is partly due to his cold temperament. Unlike characters driven by strong emotions, Igo does not experience violent storms of passion that need to be controlled. This coldness allows him to maintain his facade effectively, without succumbing to bursts of genuine emotion that might give him away. Bradley proposes that Igo's superficial good-naturedness adds to his ability to deceive others. Despite his selfish and unfeeling nature, Igo presents himself as affable and likable, which contributes to his popularity and the trust placed in him by those around him. Bradley suggests that before the events of the play, Igo may not have been involved in serious wrongdoing. Instead, he led a relatively ordinary life, enjoying the excitement of war and casual pleasures without encountering sufficient temptation to commit a major crime. The tragedy of Othello, therefore, lies in Iago's transformation from a seemingly decent man into a ruthless and destructive force, ultimately leading to his destruction. Bradley delves deeper into Iago's character, focusing on his intellectual prowess and strength of will, which are depicted as extraordinary and perhaps unparalleled among dramatic characters. Intellectual Prowess and Strong Will Iago uses his great powers of intellect and will to further his creed of absolute egoism. He believes that selfishness is the only rational and proper attitude, rejecting notions of conscience, honor, or regard for others as absurd. He does not see this as a common creed that others secretly hold but pretends otherwise, instead, he views most people as honest fools who genuinely believe in moral principles. Self-interest Igo's admiration is reserved for those who, like himself, prioritize self-interest above all else. He praises individuals who maintain a facade of duty while keeping their hearts focused on themselves, seeing them as having a true understanding of self-love. This admiration reflects his deep-seated belief in the primacy of egoism and his rejection of conventional morality. Lack of Humanity and Sympathy Iago's lack of humanity and sympathetic feeling sets him apart from most other characters in Shakespeare's world. He appears to be almost devoid of affection, showing either pleasure or indifference in the face of suffering. However, it is crucial to distinguish this lack of feeling from a general ill will towards others. When Igo does not dislike someone, he does not derive pleasure from their suffering, he simply lacks emotional response. For example, there is no indication that he takes pleasure in Desdemona's distress. However, his emotional detachment is so pronounced that when he does harbor dislike or when someone stands in the way of his objectives, there is little to prevent him from inflicting harm. Hostility Iago's dislike or hostility is not primarily driven by envy or a sense of rivalry, as some interpretations suggest. While it is true that he is intensely self-focused, his ambitions are relatively modest and his ambition is not the driving force behind his actions. If he were truly ambitious, one would expect more overt signs of ambition and a higher position than that of a mere ensign. Instead, it seems that Igor's motivations are more complex. 
He likely enjoys the thrill of warfare but does not exert himself excessively to acquire a reputation or advancement. His lack of ambition suggests that he is not habitually envious or actively hostile towards others as potential competitors. His dislike or hostility seems to stem more from a cold and calculating nature rather than a burning envy towards those who have achieved more than him. Superiority Iago's sensitivity to anything that challenges his pride or self-esteem is a defining aspect of his character. While he may not be vain, he holds a high opinion of himself and looks down upon others. He is acutely aware of his superiority in certain aspects and either disbelieves in or despises qualities in which others excel. Anything that disturbs or wounds his sense of superiority immediately irritates him, making him highly competitive in that sense. This sense of competitiveness is evident in his reaction to Cassio's appointment and scientific accomplishments, as well as his jealousy of Emilia. Why he does not genuinely care for his wife, the fear of another man outdoing him and potentially exposing him to pity or ridicule as an inadequate husband is deeply troubling to him. Additionally, since he believes that no woman is virtuous at heart, this fear is constantly present in his mind. Goodness versus Stupidity Iago also harbors spite against goodness in men, viewing it as a form of stupidity that annoys his intellect. Moreover, he resents goodness because it undermines his satisfaction with himself and challenges his belief that egoism is the correct and acceptable stance. Furthermore, he dislikes goodness because, in a world where goodness is popular and successful, he, as a man much more capable than Cassio or even Othello, does not achieve the same level of success. This discrepancy wounds his pride and fuels his disdain for goodness. Although these feelings of irritation may not always be prominent in Iago, they are consistently present in his sight. Rise of Iago's Tragedy Why did he act as we see him acting in the play? What is the answer to that appeal of Othello's? Will you, I pray, demand that demi devil? Why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body? The question of why Iago acted as he did in the play is central to understanding his character and the tragic events that unfold. While Iago himself refuses to provide a clear answer, it is possible to speculate based on his character traits and the circumstances of the play. Reasons for Iago's villainism Iago's actions lie in his deeply rooted sense of pride and superiority. Throughout the play, Iago's pride is repeatedly wounded by perceived slights and injustices, such as Cassio's promotion over him and Othello's marriage to Desdemona. These events fuel his resentment and desire for revenge, leading him to orchestrate a complex and destructive scheme. Iago's lack of empathy and moral compass allows him to justify his actions as a means to an end. His egoism and belief in the superiority of his intellect led him to see himself as justified in manipulating and harming others for his benefit. Another aspect to consider is Iago's view of the world and human nature. He believes that people are fundamentally selfish and that virtues such as love, honor, and conscience are merely masks that people wear. This cynical worldview enables him to justify his actions as a way of exposing what he sees as the hypocrisy of others. Iago's actions can be attributed to a combination of wounded pride, moral emptiness, and a cynical worldview. While he may not have a clear answer to why he acts as he does, his character is a complex portrayal of the destructive consequences of unchecked ambition, pride, and moral corruption. Iago's explanations and reasons for his actions, as revealed in his soliloquies and conversations with Rodrigo, provide some insight into his motives, but they also highlight the complexity and ambiguity of his character. Why he claims to hate Othello and has reasons for his animosity towards Cassio and Rodrigo, his true motivations are more deeply rooted in his own egoism, pride, and desire for revenge.
Iago's hatred for Othello is fueled by a sense of betrayal over Cassio's promotion and a suspicion that Othello is involved with Emilia. However, these reasons seem more like rationalizations for his actions rather than genuine causes of his hatred. His true feelings towards Othello seem to stem from a combination of envy, wounded pride, and a desire to assert his superiority. Similarly, his animosity towards Cassio is driven by jealousy and a sense of injustice over Cassio's appointment, as well as a suspicion of Cassio's relationship with Emilia. Again, these reasons mask deeper feelings of resentment and inferiority that Iago harbors towards Cassio. His treatment of Rodrigo, whom he views as a nuisance but not necessarily someone he hates, further demonstrates his manipulative nature. He uses Rodrigo for his purposes and discards him when he is no longer useful. Iago's attitude towards Desdemona is particularly complex. Why he claims to love her, his actions suggest otherwise. His desire to pay Othello in his coin and his plan to have her killed indicate a deep-seated resentment towards both Desdemona and Othello, driven by his belief in his superiority and his desire for revenge. Iago's Motives The popular view that Iago's account of his motives is a true account is certainly one interpretation, but it is not the only one, nor is it without its challenges. While Iago's desire for advancement and his resentment towards Othello are presented as motives in the play, they may not fully explain the depth and complexity of his actions. Iago is indeed an extraordinary creation and part of what makes him so is the ambiguity and depth of his character. While his stated motives seem clear, his true motivations may be more subtle and multifaceted. Critics like Coleridge, Hajlitta, and Swinburne may argue for a deeper understanding of Iago because they see in him a character whose actions defy simple explanation. Shakespearean characters are often more than they appear on the surface. They embody complex psychological and moral dilemmas that invite interpretation and analysis. Igo, with his intricate web of deceit and manipulation, invites us to consider the darker aspects of human nature and the complexities of motivation. The argument here is that the popular view of Iago as driven by passions such as ambition and hatred is not supported by the text of the play itself. The speaker points out that Igo's actions do not seem to be motivated by these intense emotions. Unlike characters such as Macbeth or Shylock, whose ambition and hatred are clearly depicted, Iago does not display such passion. Instead, he is portrayed as cold, calculating, and devoid of intense emotion. The speaker suggests that if Shakespeare had intended Iago to be driven by passion, he would have depicted this more clearly, as he did with other characters. The absence of such portrayal in Iago's character indicates that his motivations may be more complex and subtle than simple passion. This interpretation aligns with the idea that Iago is a more enigmatic and chilling character precisely because he does not conform to the typical portrayal of a passionate villain. Bradley criticizes the popular view for selectively focusing on certain motives attributed to Iago while ignoring others, which results in a simplified and naturalized understanding of his character. Instead, he argues that Iago's behavior is characterized by a complex and shifting array of motives that are not consistently expressed or acted upon throughout the play. For example, Resentment at Cassio's appointment is mentioned early on but then never revisited. Similarly, hatred of Othello is only expressed in the first act and is not consistently referenced thereafter. The desire to obtain Cassio's position is emphasized at the beginning but is not mentioned again once it is achieved. Other motives, such as suspicion of Cassio's relationship with Emilia or Iago's supposed love for Desdemona, are introduced briefly but then disappear without further development. Bradley suggests that Iago's behavior is not driven by simple, easily identifiable passions but rather by a complex interplay of motives that are constantly shifting and often contradictory. This complexity, 
according to the speaker, makes Iago's character more unnatural and suspicious, challenging the simplistic interpretations that attribute his actions to straightforward motives like ambition or hatred. Motive Hunting Bradley argues that Shakespeare's portrayal of Iago's character is much more nuanced and complex than popular interpretations suggest. Rather than being driven by clear, identifiable motives such as ambition or hatred, Iago is portrayed as a character who is constantly searching for justification for his actions, both to himself and to the audience. This process of motive hunting is evident in Iago's soliloquies, where he reflects on his feelings and attempts to rationalize his behavior. Bradley suggests that Igo's motives are not straightforward or consistent. Why he may express resentment against Othello or jealousy towards Cassio, these feelings are not the sole or even primary drivers of his actions. Instead, Igo's behavior is shaped by a complex interplay of desires, fears, and unconscious forces that he does not fully understand. Motiveless Malignity Bradley argues against the notion of Igo being driven by a motiveless malignity, suggesting instead that his actions are rooted in more understandable motives. While acknowledging that the popular view of Igo's character contains some truth, such as his desire for advancement and ill will towards Othello, the speaker contends that these motives alone do not fully explain Igo's behavior. Instead, Bradley suggests that Igo's actions are driven by a combination of self-interest and a desire to harm those he dislikes or sees as competitors. This distinction is crucial, as it distinguishes between a calculated, self-serving form of evil and a more indiscriminate, malicious form. The former is something that can be understood and to some extent sympathized with, as it is driven by recognizable human emotions and desires. The latter, on the other hand, is more abstract and less grounded in human experience, making it harder to comprehend. By emphasizing the comprehensibility of Iago's motives, Bradley argues against the idea that Iago is a purely evil character without any underlying rationale for his actions. Instead, the speaker suggests that Iago's actions, while despicable, are ultimately motivated by recognizable human emotions and desires, making him a more complex and compelling character than a mere embodiment of pure evil. Bradley suggests that while the desire for advancement and resentment over the lieutenancy are important factors in Iago's actions, they are not the primary or most characteristic factors. Instead, the speaker argues that Igo's character is defined by his keen sense of superiority, contempt for others, sensitivity to anything that wounds his pride, and spite against goodness in men. Additionally, Bradley notes Igo's annoyance at having to constantly play a role, his awareness of his exceptional but underutilized intelligence and skill, his enjoyment of action, and his lack of fear. In Shakespeare's Othello, Iago stands out among villains for his intense and subtle portrayal. He represents two key aspects of evil, absolute self-centeredness leading to vices like ingratitude and cruelty, and the alignment of evil with exceptional intellectual and willful capacities. Despite lacking the passion of characters like Richard III, Iago's egoism surpasses theirs, making him repugnant yet complex. He challenges us to consider the complexities of human nature and morality. While he embodies evil, he also possesses traits like insight and dexterity that we admire, evoking mixed emotions. Despite his malevolence, there are faint traces of conscience and humanity in him, preventing him from being a one-dimensional villain. However, attributing supreme intellectual power to him would be a mistake, as his limits are sharply defined and narrow. His failure in perception, particularly regarding love, leads to his downfall and highlights the divorce between exceptional intellect and goodness. Shakespeare's portrayal of characters like Iago explores the depths of human depravity and the consequences of unchecked malevolence, revealing profound truths about human nature and morality. In Part 2, we will explore A.C. Bradley's character sketch of Cassio and Emilia.
Stay tuned.